Hello, everyone. I'm Janet Salmons, Research Community Manager for Sage Method Space, and I'm happy to be joined uh, this morning by Dermot Breslin and Caroline Gatrell, and we're going to talk about their article about theorizing through literature reviews using the minor prospector continuum. But before we get started, if you're new to Method Space, this is a blog community sponsored by Sage Publishing. And we're interested in everything to do with designing, analyzing, research, writing about it, sharing results in all different kinds of ways. And you can see at the heart of this diagram, we have teaching and learning because we think that whether you are a brand new researcher or an experienced researcher, we all have something to learn. And that, that's certainly why I enjoy having the, this kind of an opportunity to meet with uh, researchers from around the world. And why don't we, um, to get started, introduce yourselves. So Caroline, why don't you start? Hi, I'm Caroline Gatchell. I'm Professor of Organization Studies at the University of Liverpool Management School. And my main research area is work and family. And at the same time, I like writing about literature reviews as a really important way of theorizing and providing a strategic platform for a given area of concern. Great, and uh, Dermot? Yeah, thank you, Janet. I'm Dermot Bresson. I'm Professor of Organizational Behavior at Wren School of Business. Uh, my research is broadly within organizational change and learning. Uh, I was a former editor of the International Journal of Management Reviews, which is a literature review journal for mm. business and management. And Caroline and myself shared a, a period of uh, co-editorship in that. And, and this paper really draws on that shared experience, as well as our own experiences of writing literature reviews. Yeah. So yeah. this paper was, oh, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say what an important contribution they make. I really enjoyed working with, with Dermot on IJMR, and I now actually am a general editor with the Journal of Management Studies, where we are, we publish a broad range of papers, but we do focus on reviews as well as empirical papers. So that's a place where uh, viewers might uh, like to go and, and, and find some examples of it based on this interview. So this uh, discussion is part of... Uh, interview series with the contributors to this special feature topic on rigor and uh, impactful literature reviews in the Organizational Research Methods Journal. And uh, you can find uh, those articles uh, open access on Method Space. So um, to get started, um, let's begin by defining miners and prospectors, so we can understand your uh, continuum. Um, you included this quote, um, prospectors hope to strike it rich, but probably won't. Miners' returns are moderate, but much more predictable in the actual mining West, which is where I live in Colorado, miners greatly outnumbered prospectors. So it is with historians, the prospector is fairly rare, the profession more safely rewards the miner. So, Maybe you could talk a little bit about how you came up with those uh, ideas and what they mean in, in this context. Yeah, perhaps uh, I shall begin. We, we uh, Caroline and myself agreed before the interview, we would we'd both take a position. Okay. So I'll, I'll be the miner today and Caroline okay. will be the prospector. So they, they, the, the idea I, I came across, we came across, you know, just through conversations with people and, and developing our own understanding of how people theorize through literature reviews. Uh, so on the one hand, we have miners. So we think about miners as, uh, you know, those bodies of people that work together to extract a mineral from the ground. So that mineral mm -hmm. will be available in, in different levels of richness in different locations. Each mine will be different, have different people working together, different, uh, you know, politics working within the mine, different levels of difficulty. Uh, and the mines, of course, will be complex with lots of seams like trees of knowledge, you know, and, and the miner's job is to extract that mineral um, as efficiently as possible alongside all the other miners that are working mm. together. So when we talk about the mineral, we're talking about the contributions, the, the additions to knowledge. And when we're talking about the community, it's that scholarly community that work together 
Um, so, so we see, let's say, that the, the, the bulk of the work done by uh, scholarly research in, in, uh, in business and management is, is that community of researchers working together to extract mm -hmm. the mineral. And, and in a paper, we talk about the choices and, the, and the, the difficulties of doing that specifically for the miner. But of course, the mines don't get discovered until the prospector uh, goes out there and, and discovers them first, so over to Caroline. A prospector is looking for something new. They want to start off a new scene, all of their own. And that might be, for example, because they want to talk about health or the body or some other aspect of society in the context of management. But it might be something that isn't as commonly discussed as, say, strategy as practice, which would be a very popular area to, to mm -hmm. be reviewed. So they might have to strike off on their own. And they might have to go and find a new patch that nobody else is working on and they've got to carve their own piece and there can be benefits of doing that they might strike gold they might be able to introduce their ideas into a management field and it might be an article that's quite highly cited and widely discussed on the other hand it might feel a bit lonely because there aren't lots of other miners around you reviewing in your area and it might be a bit difficult to get started because nobody really recognises what you're doing because mm -hmm. it's different. But I think that, you know, just, you know, looking at the kind of balance between those two that, you know, on one hand, you know, I think about, as I'm sure you and our method space readers, we receive the announcement table of contents for you know, each journal's new issues and, you know, literature is just being, you know, produced at this rapid pace. And, you know, how many things can you read to keep up? And, and you know, the, so there, there's all this meaningful research that people have spent a lot of time doing. Well, you know, what does it mean? And, you know, what is its significance? And then, you know, how, you know, we look at the emerging problems that we have. I mean, I think that, you know, everyone will agree that, you know, at this point we think about, well, something was either before the pandemic or after the pandemic, just as one event that has, you know, changed everyone's lives. So, you know, what new uh, issues, questions, you know, do we want to explore? So we need that prospector to be pushing forward, but at the same time to really make you know, find the value in the body of research and to look at, you know, well, what, you know, what, what can be understood, what can be gained and what practices and policies and practical, you know, outcomes can we, can we draw from and, and learn from this? Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, just just to add to that, I think the the sort of the the processes and and difficulties of getting published forces into minds in some respects because it, it's perceived as being lower risk. But the, exactly as you're saying, that the problems that we're facing they're multidisciplinary, they're fast changing problems that don't fit within one neat mine. Mm -hmm. So we need those prospectors, as 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 we talk about the paper, to you know dis discover those those connections between those new connections between existing ways of studying a phenomenon. I, I, yeah. I, was, I was thinking the other day about, you know, the, you know, because I've been immersed in talking with people about review research and literature reviews, the difference, you know, for people today where we can go in the database and look at this, you know, enormous uh, variety of, publications from around the world in all different disciplines, you know, compared with, you know, being in the library and trying to look at, you know, paper copies and go through, you know, or being a subscriber to the journals in your own field. So, you know, even for that, the minor, you know, it seemed like that role is, is very different today. It, it is. It's easier, but it's harder. When I was doing my PhD, I spent a lot of time in the library reading papers and noting down the references that they'd cited and then going and chasing them up. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted something that wasn't contained in the library, I had to fill in a form right. and the librarian would order it from somewhere else for me to have a look at. Well, obviously things have moved on since then. Right. However, the volume of material is such that it's a real challenge. 
to be able to decide what's relevant and what's not relevant for your review. So it's it's all there at the touch of a finger, but it's it's much it's much more difficult, I think, to to be precise and focused. So the challenge for the reviewer is different. There's much more material available. Well, that's why that's I think that the artic articles hard. like like yours that give people some guidance about how to strategize and be much more specific about what you're doing, you know, is, is really important now because otherwise, yeah, you put in some general search term and now you've got like five zillion articles and like where do you start? So, um, so I, I want to get uh back to your continuum, which I find uh, very interesting, and you know, as with any continuum, we have the extremes at either end uh, and, you know, varying degrees of kind of intermingling um, through the, the continuum. So, um, you know, perhaps we could uh, talk about that. And I, I have it on a slide, so I will put that up so that our viewers can, can see it while you're discussing it. Helpful to us as well. Yeah. Shall I kick off then? Yeah, sure. The mining. <clears throat> so they, we've got uh, what what we do in this chart is we we show that there are eight different strategies and we we produce a, re a review of reviews within the papers to to exemplify those different strategies. Uh, what we argue is that that no strategy is completely minor or prospector because mm -hmm. papers have elements of both, and that's what the diagonal line is showing here. But mm -hmm. as you move to the top of it, you become more like a, a miner and the, the approach becomes more prospector in nature the more you move down. So if we think about the spotting conceptual gaps, you know, this is the classic uh, approach that we might give advice to our PhD students on, you know, you, you identify a gap in the literature and you fill it. Uh, and this as editors of, of uh, review journals as well, this is what we find that the majority of papers submitted are, are spotting conceptual gaps. Uh, but we find that these papers you know, and, and if you think about if you're a miner, you enter a gap, you enter a mine as a novice and you try and identify a position within the mine where you can work alongside other miners to extract a mineral. Uh, of course, by doing that, you have to stick with the conventions of the mine. You have to be respectful of the other workers, use the same methodological tools. So in many ways, you're you're confined by the boundaries and conventions of, of the discipline that you're working within. And this mm -hmm. can really limit the, your contribution to theory. Uh, and we did find that many of these reviews tend to be quite descriptive in nature um, and, and less adventurous, let's say, in, in terms of the, the new in, insights that they're, they're generating. Uh, another approach, minor classic minor approach, would be organizing and categorizing literatures. So this is where you, you review a literature and you might classify it according to, let's say, antecedents, process and outcomes, which is a very uh, standardized approach now in literature reviews. Again, um, these approaches tend to be a little bit predictable in the sense that, uh, you know, we, one could imagine in the future an algorithm being able to do a similar sort of uh, exercise. So there is a contribution to knowledge there, but again, it's within the confines of a, a very clearly defined uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. As we move towards the problematizing literatures and identifying contradictions, uh, what these approaches seek to do is, let's say, upset the status quo of the mine, question the position and the, and the direction strategy of miners within a particular mine. You know, why are they you know, extracting mineral in a particular way using a method? Why are they... Uh, you know, looking at the mine in a, in a particular way in terms of uh, how the, the theory is structured. Uh, so, so let's say they still, these approaches still stay within a disciplinary boundary uh, largely, but they seek to, to change the status quo, to change the, the foundations of the mine in terms of how things are done. So uh, the contributions tend to be more prospector in nature. Uh, so Perhaps I'll pass over to Caroline for the prospectors. Yeah, so the prospector builds really on, on, on the mine. It's quite likely that one of the reasons that somebody's gone out to do some prospecting is because they see there are problems with the literature and it might be that there's something missing, but it might be something missing from out with the boundary of the mine. 
and they might want to use different tools to help understand or conceptualize the area of concern. So it might well be that in having problematized the literature and identified contradictions, they might look across domains for something that helps shed light on the problem. So they might look to sociology or philosophy or psychology, and they might bring that back into the mm. management studies field. To help understand something that's unfamiliar, it would be um, quite a, a nice idea to develop an analogy or metaphor across the domains to try and illuminate what the topic is. And it might, be, it might be that you're blending and merging of literatures across domains. So perhaps you're bringing into management studies something that we don't talk about very much within our context. It might be that a writer is bringing in something about the body or about a philosopher, perhaps a historic philosopher that isn't much discussed in management. It might be bringing in some of the feminist literature that isn't often discussed in the management journals. And that might lead to setting out new narratives, conceptualizations. In doing so, it brings a challenge. My work, whether it's a literature review or whether it's empirical, tends to focus around the areas of gender, health and the body. And one of the challenges I might receive in reviews are, well, why are you, why are you putting this in a general management journal? What has this got to do with management? Why don't you put it in a gender journal? So there's something about drawing upon these techniques, like, for example, using a metaphor or blending very carefully the, the gender literature with the management literature in such a way that you can communicate your ideas to the reader that will allow you to set up these new narratives and conceptualizations. So as a prospector, you might be entering new territories that are not much discussed in general management journals. And you're going to have to work quite hard on your communication strategy, mm. linking what you're doing with management studies for the general reader so that they can see, oh, yes, I get it. This is really important for management studies. But so since our readers come from all different disciplines and, you know, I think there is a, a greater interest today in either interdisciplinary where we're you know, bringing things together across disciplines or multidisciplinary research where we can look at what's been done, you know, from another angle and, and bring that in. So it sounds like that's part of what the prospector's role is to, to look beyond whatever their own kind of, you know, home field of study might be to look at, you know, other dimensions that, that may be important, but maybe have been ignored for you know, variety of reasons, the way that research has been done, who has been uh, in the role of researcher, you know, to even, you know, create the studies as we go back in time, you know, there's certainly, you know, more limited um, participation in, in this, you know, level of, of, uh, of profession. So, you know, raising those, those new questions, uh, you know, it's, it seems like that you know, that is an important role for the for the prospector. And then as you also touch on the, the publishing side, so, you know, where where something might fit, is it going to then still fit in your more discipline specific journals or, you know, are we going to look somewhere else? I mean, one of the things that I like about working in the research methods, methodology field is that it does cross disciplines and we can open it up and and learn from one another. Yeah, absolutely. But I, still, I think, I think that, you know, having this on the continuum that, you know, we we need to understand those foundations before we, I mean, do you feel that, that that's kind of, we've got to start there, even if we're going to become a prospector, those basic skills of the minor are going to be needed anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, Karen Dermott. Yeah, sorry. The, yeah, the community, obviously, the wider community needs needs the mix of both. But I, I think in all our endeavours, we have a mixture of both. And it's about managing that over our career, managing the different minor and prospector projects, because obviously the more generative, creative prospector pro pro 
projects, they work on that basis of the knowledge, the knowledge of what's inside mm -hmm. the mind, because we can't seek to connect minds until we know how they're structured. So, you know, it's about having that in-depth knowledge, but also seeking mm -hmm. to make connections between them. I think we all have a duty to do both, to to be managing both, both of us. We, what, whereas we may be predominantly minor or prospector, we, we need to have in mind both approaches in, in all of, of what we do. And there's merit in both approaches. It depends what the problem is. It might well be that there's a problem that you want to answer within the mine because you want to push against what everyone else is saying. But it might be that the materials you need are outside the boundaries of whatever your given field or area is. And in, in sort of excavating new territories, you might discover something that changes the way that we think about things altogether. Right. Um, so I, I've got a little example of somebody who okay. I would say was a prospector, um, not just writing reviews, she did empirical work as well, but Hilary Graham was writing in mainly in the 1980s, I think, about um, women smoking and really interrogating the public health policies to try and reduce the incidence of smoking. Mm -hmm. And what she discovered and argued is that this is not just a health issue. This is not just about how you write the health prevention leaflets. This is about that the women who are smoking are often doing it because they're managing really problematic aspects in their lives. She was looking particularly at women who are living in, in poverty and, and managing their families on a very tight budget. And she was saying that the smoking is something that just keeps them going so they can manage the rest. So if you want to actually reduce the incidence of smoking, you have to look beyond that particular mm -hmm. health issue and look more broadly. And she did change the way that health policy was formulated as a result of her research because she brought sociological and philosophical ideas into the health literatures. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great example. Um so in the the title of your article you you're referring to the development of of new theory. So you know how can this kind of uh, review that that balances the, the mining and the prospecting uh, generate new theory. Yeah, again, perhaps I could start from the minor point of view. We, we in the paper, we, we argue that when we talk about theory, we talk about the broad process of theory development. So theory could develop from a very fledgling idea, something completely new towards you know, a, a vast community of scholars working in it in lots of, mm -hmm. lots of different empirical studies. Um, and, and we see the, let's say, the traditional minor approach tend to be towards the end of that spectrum, you know, the more developed research because there's a larger body of knowledge. It's about identifying gaps in that knowledge um, and, and trying to fill them in terms of filling that tree of knowledge using another metaphor, you know, going through all the different branches. Uh, but, but clearly the more, not but the prospector can contribute to all stages of that theory development process. Perhaps Caroline can talk more about that. Yes, I think the prospect has an opportunity to be a bit broader. They're perhaps stepping back a bit and they can they can see the whole of the wood rather than the individual tree. So they might be able to bring something new to bear, a completely different perspective on a, on a difficult problem. And what... I guess what, what all reviewers can do, if, you, if you're writing a, about a problem using empirical data, you're inevitably narrowing your focus because you've got to talk about that, what the data is telling you. But if you're doing a review, and especially, especially perhaps if you're a prospector, it enables you to take a step back and you can be a bit broader. Mm -hmm. And actually, whichever end of the spectrum you are, whether you're a minor or prospector, you can provide a strategic platform that other people can base their empirical studies on. What it gives you the opportunity to really talk about ideas and develop ideas, maybe push back against what's already been said, or if you're uh, excavating new territories, you, you might come up with something that's completely new that nobody's ever thought of. But it gives you that opportunity to say, let's have a look what everyone else has said. Let's pull it all together. Mm -hmm. And then let's look at what difference it makes to theory. 
And if you're a prospector, you might be bringing in completely new ideas that nobody's really talked about before within the area of concern. Right, and we think about theory development of trying to identify relationships between different concepts and constructs. So, you know, I could see that, you know, from the that bigger picture prospector lens, you know, we have the opportunity to identify and say, well, wait a minute, as, as the example that you um, offered about the uh, smoking uh, research, you know, if that researcher had only looked at the health research, they wouldn't say, well, wait a minute, there's a relationship between things outside of just making a decision about my health. It's also in response to other factors in my environment, in my in the society, in the culture, in the family, wherever, you know, that, that are causing, you know, this uh, phenomenon. So, you know, perhaps that's a part of it too. Absolutely. I think relationships is, is critical. And bringing in, in a way, different variables, you look at this this perhaps quite narrow area, and you might bring in something new, and then you think, oh, actually, this looks different now. I've added in this extra perspective. Well, I, th I think our method space readers will find this uh, article very uh, useful and you know helpful way to to think about kind of where to place their own efforts, whether they're trying to do a literature review as the foundation for a, a new study or um, doing review research where you know the the published literature is the data um, you know what will help them to, to think a little bit more about what they're trying to achieve and how that fits with the design of their whole approach and and the literature they select to read. So is there anything else you would like to add? Yeah, maybe uh, just the, the, the final thing to add is, as Caroline said previously, you know, both approaches, all approaches are, are valued, but but certainly given the, the challenges that we face now in research and business and management um, and, and the kind of the, the, the grand challenges that organizations are facing, there is a need for more prospectors for different approaches, connecting minds in new ways. Um, and, and it falls on all of us, that responsibility. It also falls on the responsibility of institutions, institutions to value that prospect of work. It's more difficult to get published. It's the challenges are, are, are much more significant. The risks are higher uh, and, and, you know, promotions and, you know, selection panels needs to value the, the type of research that people is, are doing. And of course, the journals aren't immune from this, you know, as, as Caroline mm -hmm. said, it's, you know, editors, you know, arguably to publish a prospector paper involves an editor being at least aware of what the publisher contribution might look like and, and the ch additional challenges that they'll have to face from defensive miners who perspective who prospectively might be reviewing the paper. So it's mm -hmm. it's having a prospector editor in charge of, of the process, mm -hmm. I think, that can make a difference. I don't know, Caroline, if there's anything you want to add on that. There's also quite a lot you can do as a prospector. I think Janet's word relationships is really helpful in this regard because it's important that you connect with your readership. So if you're going for a journal that's perhaps outside of what you're doing is outside of their fields, it's really important right at the start of your paper to make those connections and so you can convince the reader that what you're doing is important and relevant to them. And we can see how this change has happened. If we look at some of the CSR literatures, that's now something that's very prominent in general management journals. When, you know, a decade or so ago, that wouldn't have been the case. So I think it's about who, who are you writing for? What's the audience mm -hmm. that you want to share your views and, and your knowledge with? And, and, and really try and talk to them. If you want to convince them that this is important, have a look at their language and, and how they understand things and, and see if you can actually communicate your ideas in such a way that understandable and interesting to the reader, mm. whether that be the editor or the reviewer or, or the reader at the, at the end of the day. But don't give up. Well, I think I think you've made some really uh, important points about just kind of the whole ecosystem of scholarship that, you know, if you are a professor working with 
doctoral students who help them, even if they maybe are not at the point where they have the knowledge foundation to, to work at that prospector level, but at least to be aware, well, this is, this is a possibility. This is where you can go. Then, you know, at the stage of being a reviewer, whether you are a reviewer within an institution approving a dissertation or thesis proposal, or whether you're looking at an article to that, you know, awareness of, of this, you know, the continuum you've described, I think, you know, would be um, very helpful for advancing the knowledge uh, in, in whatever field. So, well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time. And I think it helps to illuminate um, this very interesting article and uh, uh, appreciate your, uh, your thoughts today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janet. Thank you.